Moloemi. Thank you very much, Program Director, and uh, my uh, fellow uh, panelists here. Uh, my right, Kwezi uh, Kunene, who's the chairperson of one of our entities, Playhouse, uh, Deben Playhouse, uh, in, in KwaZulu Natal. Uh, the Deputy Minister, uh, John Jeffries, of uh, uh, Justice and Correctional Services. It was constitutional uh, <laughs> development in the past. Uh, uh, Ms. Pam, uh, one of the members of the, of the Social Cohesion Advocates, uh, we really are here today, um, uh, almost 30 years uh, into democracy. <clears throat> uh, just to look back, both commemorate and celebrate this day, commemorate the fact that it is a day which is founded uh, on, the, the on, the, on the blood, sweat, and tears of our people. You talk of Sharpville massacre, you talk of uh, Langa, uh, and so on. But the democratic government decided that we need to highlight the need for human rights in this country. Uh, hence the day, Human Rights Day. Um, and we are saying that as South Africa, we've gone a long way. It's not just lip service, human rights. It's enshrined in our constitution. That is why you have supporting structures like uh, the chapter nine, uh, the chapter nine uh, structures, uh, constitutional bodies, which are supporting uh, the human rights uh, in our country. It's quite important. It's not something which is perfect. Just think of uh, the couples, Dr. Fabian Ribeiro and wife Florence, gunned down cold-bloodedly, precisely because they were calling for human rights in South Africa. Just think of a couple, the Mklangas, Griffiths, and Ma Victoria, killed brutally for daring to say we should be given human rights as South Africans, our dignity. The United Nations declared apartheid as crime against humanity. So therefore human rights to us is just but the base, it's not the end, it's the means to the end. The struggle for freedom was not just civil liberties, it was deeper than that. It was about changing fundamentally the lives of our people for better. So we're here today to say those things which still affect us, we have an obligation to fight. As the acting di director general of the department, Dr. Kumalo has said, that we can't talk of human rights without addressing the issue of gender-based violence and femicide. And we, in particular, in the sector we are in, <coughs> where we deal with creatives and athletes, <coughs> we, we find it uh, very important that we pursue deliberately the fight against <coughs> women abuse. The outfit you saw here, uh, Hulikan, <coughs> is, the, is one of such endeavors by the Department of Sport, Arts, and Culture. Theirs is, is specifically the conversation which they have between boys and men. They are men, they have this conversation on an ongoing basis with boys because we felt we need to concentrate on the boy child. Because if things are not right from there at the beginning, this boy is going to be the menace to society. So that's what they are dealing with. The second aspect of this fight is what we call bakawafas, where women um, are the ones who are leading the charge uh, in asserting women's rights, in asserting women in our society. <clears throat> and the third aspect is the aspect of silapa, which is mostly the psychosocial support 
uh, which deal with uh, mental challenges uh, and other areas uh, related to what uh, creatives and, and athletes do. This as part of ensuring that we don't talk human rights in a vacuum, in abstract, but practically having programs which are, which are dealing with that. So the, 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 the scope is big uh, because it has to do with uh, economic justice, for instance. We can talk everything if we have not unpacked and dealt with that area, we wouldn't have gone far. Part of the program and what the focus is today is on chapter nine institutions. It's also on languages. As government, and, 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 <coughs> and many people uh, don't know this, every year you, you, we have about 350, we, we, we support financially 350 students to study languages in all major universities in this country every year because we think the issue of language is very important. If we are to change things, we have to assert the language. And that's part of ensuring and deepening the culture of human rights in, in, in our country. And as a result, we have moved to where we are today and uh, <clears throat> we are saying that let's have this frank conversation about our experiences under democracy and obviously contrasting the democratic dispensation from where we come from, uh, the apartheid the period, that how far have we gone? We think that so much has been done. If we look at us and reflecting other countries and see how brazenly human rights are violated by the state in other countries, we see that South Africa has gone a long way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.